I am making this video to explain it to you how MCQs are properly designed to manipulate your minds into thinking that a particular option is correct while it is incorrect. So we have an example here. A situation is given based on which we have to answer for two entities P and Q. So this is a multiple correct option. Okay. And today's situation is going to address how multiple correct options are properly designed by the people who make exams based on their uh, own psychological techniques. They want to check your ability to discard incorrect options. See, uh, I have been telling this in my short videos recently An MCQ question is not only about taking the right option, but it is also the ability of discarding the incorrect option. If you don't have the ability to discard the incorrect option, you won't make it through that exam. So yeah, this video is going to address multiple correct question. So we have uh, a situation. So it, it is a generalized question. A situation is given. It could be any question, any numerical uh, question. And based on it, we have to answer for two entities. We have to answer for P and Q. So we have four options. A, P is equal to X. B, P is equal to Y. C, Q is equal to U and D, Q is equal to V. So the question is asking for us to calculate for P and it has given two options for P's value and it is asking us to uh, calculate for Q. We have been given two options to calculate for Q. So X, Y, U, V are some random values. So what students usually do is they don't solve the exact question. Uh, even I used to do it to save time. See, if you are solving this question at home, you'll obviously solve it till the uh, extreme numerical value and uh, then you'll take the options. When you are sitting at the exam center, you are presented with limited time value. So it may be two hours or three hours of exam. So instead of solving to the extreme numerical value, what we do is approximately get to the question. We uh, somehow try to get from the option to the question. Even I used to do this during my J time. So uh, it isn't like a bad thing. But today I'm going to warn you how they already know that students do this. Okay. It's not like you are playing with them. They will be playing with you. So your uh, techniques of getting from the option to the question will be use against your own self to take the wrong option. I'll give you an example at the end. All right. So let's get through uh, what a, a normal student will think that there is this possibility of getting one among these two answers. So it's A or B and there's a possibility of getting C or D. So C or D. All right. So the possible combinations of an answer will be A, C, A, D, B, C or B, D. Okay. It is. So there are four possibilities. See, uh, students are usually scared of multiple correct options because they think that there are so many possibilities. See, when there's a multiple choice question, there are only four possibilities, A or B or C or D. But when there's multiple correct options, students get so pissed that there are so many possibilities for that uh, question that they don't even try to solve it. So today I'm going to uh, give you the probability zone. It is not that, that many possibilities. See, for a multiple correct uh, question, there are uh, these possibilities a b c d a b b c c d a c a d b d uh, a b c a c d a b d and b c d and uh, a b c d so there are 15 possibilities only 15 possibilities it isn't always 15 possibilities like if you have the question if you have been given the question you can rule out the certain possibilities so for example uh, here a b c d in this question is not true because p can have p can't have two values and q can't have two values so a b c d is not possible again three uh, three option possibility is not there because again one value cannot have uh, one entity cannot have two values so we have a normal student okay a normal student will get four possibilities here so probability is increased from 1 by 15 to 1 by 4 probability of getting a correct answer is increased from 1 by 15 to 1 by 4 but what if i tell you 
that none of these four possibilities are true for this question like usually that will happen that these possibilities are true but what if the examiner the person who has designed the exam wants you to think that there are these four possibilities but only one among these options are true i'll give you a proper example from hc verma it's concepts of physics part 1 uh, shm objective 2 question number 12 yeah one thing objective 2 of hc verma is the most beautiful exercise you can solve to get through je advanced like exams solving numericals might be time consuming or difficult but it won't manipulate you to wrong tick the wrong answer okay either you will get to the value or either you will not get to the value but when it comes to the fundamentals the people who designed the exam shaped the option in a way to manipulate you to tick the other option so objective 2 of hsa verma is beautifully crafted to make your fundamentals clear when i used to solve the objective 2 of hsa verma i used to have an existential crisis sometimes that how is this option correct and this is not correct the one that i have ticked so let's go with the example from hsa verma oh my god it's raining it doesn't matter so the question is a particle moves on the x axis according to the equation x equal to x not sin square omega t the motion is simple harmonic uh, a amplitude is x not b amplitude is 2x not c time period is 2 pi by omega and d time period is pi by omega so this situation that i have taken i'm pretty sure sitting at home you will think that oh my god it's really a easy question and i'll solve it through and through but during exam when you actually calculate the time you can give to each question most of the times you will have only 1 to 2 minute to solve one question when it comes to the anxiety of exams you won't be able to solve through and through so what you will try to do is get from the option to the question so going through that way you'll just check that whether amplitude's value has 2 in it or not so if you find that through some approximate thinking you won't even solve on paper you'll just think that whether it has 2 or not and you'll find that there's 2 so you'll take option b and uh, again for time period you'll see whether the value has 2 in it or not if you find that there isn't a 2 value so you'll take this and you will be cooked because b is not the answer only d is the answer none of the a and b are the answers if you actually solve it x is equal to x not sin square omega t uh sin theta sin square theta is given by 1 minus cos 2 theta by 2 so if you put this value in here you will get x is equal to x not 1 minus cos 2 omega t by 2 which can be written as x is equal to minus of x not by 2 cos 2 omega t minus 1 So here you can see that amplitude is x not by two. So there is two in it, but it is x not by two. It is not randomly happening here. The person who has designed the question wants that there is two in the option as there in the uh, answer, but not in this form. It should not be x not by two, but two x not. So a normal student. in hurry will obviously take option b which will be incorrect and yeah for time period uh, we have angular frequency to be 2 omega okay so time period is 2 pi by angular frequency is equal to 2 pi by omega is equal to pi by omega yeah so that's correct obviously but again there was this manipulation happening all right now you are clear that there might be a possibility in such type of scenarios of having a single option correct which most of the students won't have the confidence see sometimes even if you get the answer this is a bit simpler than the main examination obviously uh, more difficult questions than this will appear in the exam so even if even if you solve the numerical value you won't have the confidence to take a single option in multiple correct question all right it takes a lot of practice and a lot of clarity in concepts to have such confidence all right now you have gained the confidence to take a single option in a multiple correct question but what if i tell you that in such case three options can be correct too you will be surprised right i have an example again from hc verma objective 2 of uh, gravitation again i am telling you i am giving you examples that are a bit easy but in main exams tougher question than this will appear with the same manipulation techniques 
so right now you will think that okay i got it already i have found that manipulation happening in my mind already but i would be able to tick the option but in the main exam you will have more tough question and less time to tick the option with more anxiety because the repercussions of ticking a single option will be more on your future inside a uniform spherical shell a gravitational potential is zero b gravitational potential is same everywhere c gravitational field is zero d gravitational field is same everywhere again the same situation this question was about numerical values this is about properties p p q q gravitational potential gravitational potential gravitational field gravitational field okay this question might sound a bit simpler if you have the concepts even a bit clear but during the main exam whatever exam that you are giving which has multiple correct options in it it will be more difficult than this so a person will again think that one among a and b is correct and one among c and d is correct but there are three options correct in this question inside of a spherical shell potential is given by minus g m by a where a is the radius okay so you can see that the potential inside the spherical shell is not dependent on the distance from the center which is given by small r so it's obviously same everywhere so b is correct it is not zero so a is not correct okay now coming to c and d gravitational field inside a spherical shell again is uh, zero everywhere so c is correct but again obviously d is correct because it is same everywhere zero you can obviously make silly mistake even in this question but if you have your mind in control you won't make a silly mistake like this uh, like not choosing d in here but obviously there will be tougher question which will be more manipulative than this in the main exam so yeah that was it for today i'll keep coming like this from here onwards to make longer videos to explain psychology of learning okay this isn't specific to any exam no matter whatever exam that you are giving i'll be sharing science of solving and learning in my videos so no matter whatever stream that you are learning it could be medical engineering you could be a college student you would be preparing for a competitive exam learning and solving questions the techniques remain the same for everyone and i'll be sharing really creative techniques the techniques that i have been sharing on my short videos until now i'll be going into the depth of those techniques in the longer videos shorter videos give me only a 1 minute uh, on youtube shorts and 1.5 minutes on instagram so i can only explain the techniques in short but i cannot go in depth so i'll be coming in this form on my long videos to explain those techniques to you in depth so that you understand how you can use those techniques in your own life and yeah lastly an mcq has two options okay one is correct and the second one is you might have said incorrect but no the second one is plausible plausible option the people who design mcqs don't randomly throw correct and incorrect options but correct and plausible options these plausible options are supposed to be attractive to the person who is solving questions okay it should be attractive and these plausible options are technically called as distractors i'll keep teaching about these distractors in my future videos because there are a lot of examples a lot of different varieties in uh, distractors i have recently uploaded a uh, overlapping concept named distractor as a short form i'll keep discussing these distractors in my long form videos because there are several varieties and they are extremely manipulative so you obviously need to know make sure you sub subscribe to my channel so that you can uh, never miss out on these updates and yeah my name is sunny and today on cinematic you learned about distractors